Hello and good morning friends. Today I want to talk to you about how this simple, very basic septic inspection on a house from 1953 saved this buyer between ten dollars and $20,000. Let's get into it. All right, so 1953, what are we working with, right? It was a very simple, straightforward home, nothing crazy. It was very classic, basic, normal Baltimore County style house, one of those Craftman Cape Cod styles. So when we get to the property, it was recently renovated. And you know how I feel about flippers at times. Some of them do great work, some not so much, right? This particular one looks like they did a decent job, right? Overall, interior looked fine, plumbing looked fine, pressure tank looked good, all the HVAC stuff looked fine, everything's good to go. But now we gotta take a look at the septic, right? So first thing we notice when we get down into the basement, the main sewer stack's painted, right? Now with old homes, especially those from like 1950, 1940, 50, 60, 70, sometimes the 80s, you would have what's called a cast iron sewer stack, right? Cast iron pipe, super common back in that time period. And basically all it is is just metal, right? Now, as metal ages, and especially when you have sewer water going through it, it's gonna rust. Now, this rust is what we call pitting. Basically what happens is it creates texture on the inside of that pipe. And eventually the pipe just kind of collapses on itself and then you get a clog, now you got problems. So that was the inside of the home. So we had cast iron piping in the house and they painted it. Now you might be asking, well, why, why would you paint a sewer pipe? And generally one, it's because it doesn't look very great when it's been sitting there for 60, 70 years, right? But two, a lot of times you'll do that uh, to kind of cover up any of like the leakage stains. And the issue with painting that pipe is like, let's just say we use a latex cover or a latex paint of some variety. It kind of sticks to itself. So if you go to open the lid or if you tap that, that cap while you're trying to use the wrench uh, and all of a sudden that cast iron pipe just explodes on you, turns to glass, right? And so now you've got the issue of now you got a broken pipe and a broken sewer stack trying to run the camera through the pipe, right? Now, the issue with this is that if I go to open that lid and I break that cap, or if I break the pipe, I'm responsible for fixing it. And that's where we run into a problem. So my general rule of thumb is if you have paint on your sewer cap, especially if it's cast iron, I ain't touching it, right? I'm not gonna be the one to pop that bad boy open and create a huge host of issues, unless we know for sure that we already have to replace it anyway, right? So we go outside, we find the septic tank. They're using a five gallon bucket as the lid. My favorite, no big deal, but it happens. Pop that lid open, take a look inside. It's a terracotta clean out on top of the tank. Not uncommon, but you do see it from time to time. 1953, they would either use a cast iron pipe or terracotta pipe. Pop that open, we take a look inside the tank, right? We see a wall baffle in the tank, but the color's off, right? The color looked weird. Uh, didn't quite look like what you typically would see for either cinder block or concrete. It was like an orangish color. So that kind of piqued my, my curiosity. And there was a wall baffle, which is very uncommon in our area. Our area might use wall baffles way more often than our area does, but they're not super common around here. So we got red flag number one is the color. Red flag number two is that we got a wall baffle. Red flag number three is gonna be that when I put my camera into the sewer pipe, immediately turns to terracotta pipe and it is full of roots, cracks, breaks, soil. Like that pipe is gnarly. It's shocking that the workers could actually use the toilet and not have any of that stuff come back to the house. So another good reason of if you don't know where the tank's at, if you don't know what the tank looks like, be careful opening that sewer stack in the house because you could have it coming back at you and that's never a good time, right? So go ahead, take the camera, run the pipe through, see that the pipe's all sorts of gnarly messed up. That's an issue, but it's a fixable issue, right? The next thing we wanna do is we wanna look to see what does the outlet pipe look like? And how we do that is I probe out the edges of the tank, we find out how it's oriented, and then on a concrete tank, the lid will always be in the middle. So once you figure out how it's oriented, you just dig down in the center, boom, right there's the lid. But while I'm probing, my probe's bouncing back at me, and that's kind of, odd right doesn't happen super often so my first thought is well maybe it's plastic but then my remember that tank color was orange so it starts bouncing for a little bit and then i probe some more and then thump, probe goes right through hmm, that's odd so i move to a different spot probe again probe goes right through we're working with a metal tank right metal tanks are incredibly dangerous and they're not acceptable in our state and the reason why is sewer gas is very corrosive and so what will happen is over the course of many years that gas will break down that metal until eventually it just becomes paper thin right 
And the concern is over time with the weight of the dirt, lawnmowers, tractors, walking over it, etc., you run the risk of that of that tank collapsing on you and going for a swim in five foot of sewage, right? So as soon as as soon as I find out that we're working with a tank that's made of metal, basically we're done. It's time to replace, right? In our state, you don't find metal tanks that often. It does happen from time to time. I usually come across maybe one a year, maybe two. Uh, they're far and few between, and you'll only ever really see them on houses from 1940 or 1950. More commonly in our area, you're likely to see cinder block tanks. Cinder block tanks were very prevalent back when these older homes were built. It was just cheap, right? Everybody liked cheap stuff, so that's what everybody used. Now, we know we got a metal tank. We know we've got a messed up sewer line. The next thing we got to look at is the absorption system, which happens to be a dry well, a pit. We've covered those in the past, right? So the pit looked like it was in pretty good shape, right? Didn't see a whole lot of water in there. We introduced about 300 gallons of water, didn't see any liquid level change, and the blocks themselves looked like they're in decent shape. So our action items for that particular property was to replace the tank and the pipe from the home. Now, originally what had happened, and this is why I'm, I'm telling this story, as a buyer to beware, right? What happened was the seller had pumped the tank and what they had done is they'd furnished the pumping receipt to the prospective purchaser. And they said, hey, you don't need to worry about inspecting the tank. We just had it pumped. And the buyer didn't quite feel right with that. So they said, well, you know, I appreciate you saying that we can go ahead and have the tank pumped, but we're going to get an inspection anyway. Now, mo and I don't, maybe your area is different, but in our area, most pumpers, they're just going to pop the lid open, shove the hose in, suck all the stuff out and be on their way, right? They're not going to look at the pipes. They're not going to look at the in inside. They're not going to look at the tank. They just pump out the stuff and leave, right? And on top of that, most of them are just gonna give you an invoice. They're not gonna say like, what do the baffles look like? What are the access liquid level, et cetera. A few companies do, but not, not often. Maybe your area is a little bit different and I'm very curious below, let me know, right? When you get your tank pumped, what does that pumping receipt look like? Do they tell you what's going on? Do they tell you how the condition of the tank looks? Is everything working, you know, or is anything goofy going on? Leave that comment below, right? And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit subscribe, right? I know that it's it's hard sometimes, but it helps everybody grow, helps me grow. And I look forward to these conversations. I try to get to everybody in the comments as fast as I can. So hit that like button, hit subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what your pumper's doing, right? I wanna talk to you guys in the comments. So we find out this tank's messed up, right? We find out the sewer line's messed up and it's a kind of a tight lot, right? The well is in a really bad spot. In our area, you have to be 100 feet from the septic tank to the well, right? Just that we have a good distance between the two. You don't have to worry about any kind of sewage water getting into your drinking well. So we go ahead, tell the client, this is what's going on. This is how it's gonna end up looking. And then we can start the process of pulling a permit, trying to figure out what it's gonna cost to replace that tank. In this particular circumstance, because you have to reroute all the plumbing and move everything about 40 feet to the right of the house, they're looking at about $15,000 to get all that done, right? Really uh, expensive, especially for a home of the size of this house, right? It was only a two bed, one bath, nothing super crazy. It was about three quarter of an acre, farmland, middle of nowhere, right? So they basically are spending what would amount to basically be about 10% of the property just to fix the septic, right? But had they not done that inspection, they could have had that thing collapse. Somebody could have got killed. Somebody could have got hurt. And on top of that, now you can't use your toilets until you get it fixed. Whereas right now they have the ability to fix it while still using the system that's in place until they get a chance to actually address the situation. So all this is said uh, that if you're buying a home or if you're thinking about purchasing a home, if somebody ever gives you a pumping receipt and says, hey, I already pumped the tank. You don't need to worry about it. Don't believe them, right? Get your own contractor, get your own inspection company to take a look at it. Make sure everything's doing the way that doing things the way that it's supposed to be done, right? In our state, in Maryland, you are required to be a licensed inspector if you're going to inspect septic. You're required to be a licensed installer if you're going to install something on a septic. Make sure your county might be different, but make sure whatever your local codes are, they're following it and they're licensed by it, right? The way that you can check is just go to the health department website, right? It'll tell you, do you need a license? If so, what kind of license do you need, right? So like for example, in Baltimore County, you need to have a sewer drain cleaning license. 
Harford County, which is just about a minute and a couple minutes uh, to the west, east of Baltimore County, you don't need that license, right? So every county has slightly different variations in rules. But as far as the state goes, the state does have a licensure for well and septic. You just got to make sure that the guy, whoever you hire, has it, right? I hope this was helpful. Remember, leave those comments. I want to know, what does your pumper charge? Do they look for anything? What do they put on that receipt? Tell us below. Maybe your story can help somebody else who's going through something similar figure out their way through it all. Till next time, guys.